Okay, uh, the last lecture we have discussed about Rolle's theorem. So, what does this theorem say? This says that uh, if we have a differentiable function on a closed interval a b, which is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval a b, if f of a is equal to f of b, then there exists a point in which uh, the tangent at that point is parallel to x axis. Now, one can that means it is parallel to the line which joins this a and b. So, one can suppose I have this function. Now, this is my f of a, this is a this is b. Now, I have the line which joins, uh, let me draw it more carefully. I have the line which joins f of a and f of b. Now, one can ask this question that does there exist a point c in which the tangent will be parallel to the line joining f of a and f of b. So, this is uh, b f of b and this is a f of a. So, the line joining this, the slope of this line would going to be f of b minus of f of a divided by b minus of a. So, what we are asking is that does there exist a point C in which the tangent this which is going to be parallel to uh, this line, this means the slope is going to be the same. Okay, so, the, as a matter of fact, the answer to this question is yes. So, that is called the mean value theorem. So, we have a function from a closed interval a b to r satisfying 1 f is continuous on a b. That means, it is continuous at every point belonging to a b. Secondly, f is differentiable on open interval a b. Then, there exist a point, there exist C belonging to open interval a b such that f tangent at that point slope of this f prime of c is equal to f b minus of f a by b minus of a. This is so then sometimes we will in later we will use that if any function which satisfies these two condition that is f is continuous on the closed interval a b and differentiable on open interval a b we will call that m v of a b that is m v is the mean value condition on a b. So, the proof is as an application of Rolle's theorem. So, we need to construct a function in which we can apply Rolle's theorem. So, let us take g 
define g of x this is equal to f of x minus the slope of the line times x minus of a. Now, f is a continuous function, second part is of course, a continuous function. So, g is continuous, g is continuous on closed interval a b. Now, f is differentiable on open interval a b, x minus of a this is differentiable everywhere. Therefore, g is differentiable on open interval a b. Now, g of a this is equal to f of a minus this is a minus of a is 0. So, this is f of a. Now, g of b which is equal to f of b minus f b minus of f a. Now, this is b minus divided by b minus of a into x is b. So, so this is equal to f b minus f f b plus f a. So, now g of a is equal to g of b and g is a continuous function on closed interval a b and differentiable on open interval a b. Therefore, by Rolle's theorem, there exists a c belongs to a b such that g prime of c this is equal to 0. Now, what is g prime of c? Now, g prime of c is equal to f prime of c minus f b minus of f a divided by b minus of a because derivative of x minus of a is 1 and which is equal to 0. This will imply f prime of c is equal to f b minus of f a divided by b minus of a. So, this is the proof of the mean value theorem which has lot of application and some of the application we are going to see it now. Okay, so, now think of it some applications. that uh, an object is moving on a straight line. Uh, with position function, you take s is equal to f t. Therefore, for average velocity, um, between equal to a and time t equal to b is f b the increment f b minus of f a divided by b minus of a. Now, what does the mean value theorem say to us? Mean value theorem says that there exists a by mean value theorem there exists a c belongs to open interval a b such that is equal to f prime of c. That means, what it is saying. So, there is a time in which the average velocity will be equal to the instantaneous velocity. This is one uh, way of telling the mean value theorem. Yeah. So, uh, some other application, let us see this by using mean value theorem many times we can say about the boundedness of the function, how much value it 
at most it can take. For example, let us see, suppose f belongs to, I will write mb02, that means f is a continuous function on closed interval 0 to and f is differentiable on open interval 0 to. Then and it is given that f of 0 is equal to 1 and f prime of x is lesser or equal to 2 for all x belongs to 0 to. Now, we have a bound on f prime, f prime is lesser or equal to 2. Now, can we say some bound about f by knowing the bound on f prime? So, we can ask how large f of 2 can be. So, let us see f of 2 minus of f of 1 divided by 2 minus of 1 by mean value theorem is equal to f prime of c for some c belongs to 0 to. Now, we had given that f prime of x is lesser or equal to 2 for all x belongs to 0 to. Therefore, this is lesser equal to 2. This will imply f of 2 minus f of 1 is lesser equal to 2. Okay. So, f of 0 is given to me. So, let me start with 2 minus of 0. So, this is lesser equal to 2. So, f of 2 minus of f of 0, this is lesser equal to Two into two is four. This will imply that f of two is lesser or equal to four plus f of zero, which is equal to five, because f of zero is given. So by knowing the bound on f prime, here it is an example where we are going to say something about the bound at of the function f. So. Of course, uh, uh, one uh, useful application of uh, Rolle's theorem is also that uh, suppose f from a b or rather I will write f belongs to m v of a b and now if f prime of x is equal to 0 for all x, this will imply that f is constant, then and of course, we know that if f is constant, then f prime of x is going to be 0 always. So, therefore, we can write this as if and only if, we can write this as if and only if f is constant. So, f constant will imply f prime of x equal to 0. That is we have done it earlier, but it is very simple. Now, suppose f is f is not constant, suppose f is not constant, then there exists a x naught belongs to a b such that f of x naught is not equal to f of a. 
So, this will and by mean value theorem, f of x naught minus of f of a, this divided by x naught minus of a is equal to f prime of c for some c a and x naught, because if f is a continuous function on a b, a, a is a continuous function on closed interval a x naught and a is differentiable on open interval a x naught. But now, what we had been given with that f prime of c is equal to 0. So, this implies that f of x naught minus of f of a this is equal to 0, because x naught minus of a is not equal to 0. So, this will imply that f of x naught is equal to f of a. So, which is a contradiction uh, otherwise, so you can always direct with take a x naught in a b. So, you do not even need to assume this, you can start with uh, let x naught in a b. Then by mean value theorem this happens, so f of x naught equal to f of a. This is true for every x naught in a b, so f is constant. Okay. Now, one word of caution I would like to say is that uh, let me go to the another let f is from open interval 0 1 union 2 3 2 r. The domain of f is 0 1 union 2 3. Define f of x is equal to 1 on 0 1 and 2 on 2 3. Now, in this domain f is a differentiable function, because if your x lies between 0 1, then f prime of x is equal to 0, because that is constant function on 0 1 in the neighborhood it is going to be constant. So, the ratio um, uh, Newtonian uh, quotient is going to be 0. So, f prime is 0. Now, if x belongs to 2 3 open interval 2 3, then you will always get a small neighborhood in which uh, of x which is going to lie inside 2 3. And then for the derivative if you do, you are going to get 2 minus 2. So, that is 0. So, then also f prime of x is equal to 0, but f is not a constant. So, what is the problem? So, now look back the other what we have here saying is that f is a function defined on interval. So, this is very, very important that f has to be defined on an interval. Otherwise, f prime of x is equal to 0 on the domain in which f is defined, then we cannot say that f is a constant function unless and until this domain is an interval. And uh, also, uh, we can uh, say that sub another application is uh, if f prime of x is not equal to 0 for all x a b, then f is 1 1. So, this is an application of actually Rolle's theorem. 
So, f is 1 1 means what we want to show is that uh, if f of x is equal to f of y then x has to be equal to y right. So, now if f of x is equal to f of y then by Rolle's theorem there exist and x not equal to y. Then by Rolle's theorem there exists a c belongs to x and y such that f prime of c is equal to 0. So, this cannot happen which means if f of x is equal to f of y then x has to be equal to so, this will imply because this is a contradiction to this. So, which will imply that uh, f of x is equal to f of y will imply x is equal to y. So, if f prime does not vanish anywhere then f has to be a one, one to one function. Okay, so, now we will see more application of derivative, how derivative is going to help us to determine the behavior of functions. Now, what we will say that uh, by looking at the behavior of the derivative in an interval, we can say that whether the function is an increasing function or decreasing function. So, uh, so, obviously, you know intuitively if you want to look at it, so if your function is increasing, then uh, uh, if you take the slope, the slope will definitely is going to be positive in that interval it is going. So, this is what is the theorem and this is we can say that increasing decreasing test. So, let f belongs to m v of a b. Now, if f prime of x is greater or equal to 0 for all x belongs to open interval a b, then f is increasing on a b. And uh, if f prime of x is strictly greater than 0, then f is strictly increasing by the way the increasing means what the increasing function means we have uh, discussed about it earlier. So, just to recall if x is less than y then f of x is lesser equal to f of y that is increasing strictly increasing is x is less than y will imply f of x is strictly less than f of y. And similarly, we can say about the decreasing function that if f prime of x is lesser equal to 0 for all x belongs to a b, then f is decreasing. Similarly, if it is strictly less than 0, then f is strictly decreasing. See, 
the increasing and decreasing we are only talking about in an interval. It is not that about a point if a prime of x is greater than 0, then we cannot say anything about this because this is only information about a point. So, for the increasing and decreasing what we need is an interval. So, in the interval if f prime is positive then we say that it is strictly increasing. If it is negative we say that it is strictly decreasing. Okay, so, the proof is not very hard. Now, if x is less than y then look at f of y minus of f of x this is equal to f prime of c into y minus of x by mean value theorem because f of y minus f of x divided by y minus of x this is going to be f prime of c. Now, suppose it is given to us that f prime is greater or equal to 0 y minus of x y is bigger than x therefore, it is positive therefore, this is greater or equal to 0 this implies that f of y is greater or equal to f of x. If it is strictly greater than 0 this guy is strictly greater than 0 so therefore, it is strict inequality will be there. So, f of y will be strictly bigger than f of x. Similarly, for the decreasing uh, you have this is equal to f prime c, f prime c is negative, but in any case y minus of x is positive. So, this is going to give you the proof is exactly same for the decreasing function. So, let us look at a quick uh, um, uh, example. Let us take uh, f of x is equal to x to the power 4 minus of 8 x q plus 22 x square minus 24 x plus 3 find the intervals where f is increasing or decreasing. Now, you can see that f prime of x I can find out minus 24 of x uh, square plus 44 of x minus 24. So, this is equal to if we factorize it then you can see it very easily that this is going to be x minus of 1 into x minus of 2 into x minus of 3. Now, for x greater than 3 f prime of x this is going to be positive. So, f increasing because this is positive this is positive. Now, 2 less than x less than 3. Now, this uh, x minus of 1 is positive, x minus of 2 is positive, but x minus of 3 is negative. Therefore, f prime of x is negative, f decreasing. Now, 1 is less than x is less than 2, then this is positive this is x minus 2 negative, x minus 3 negative, therefore, negative negative is positive, f prime of x is greater than 0. So, f increasing. Now, x is less than 1, this is negative, this is negative, all the three quantities involving uh, the factor of x is negative, f prime of x is negative. So, f is a decreasing. So, this is what we see that I mean using the derivative we can predict the nature of the function whether they are increasing or they are decreasing. So, we will see more applications of the derivative uh, in the next lecture. So, thank you. Thank you.